Hey, what's up everybody? It is Tuesday, March 15th. So we had a nice uh, bounce back in the market today. Um, and I'm going to talk about this. I think there's a good chance that at least temporarily we hit a bottom, if not the end of the correction. Yesterday, I uh, let me just first mention tomorrow, we get the, the conclusion of the Fed meeting and it's expected that we'll see a 25 basis point interest rate hike and that would be the first hike since December 2018. Uh, there's a very small chance we're going to see a 50 base. First of all, 25 basis point hike is already factored in. Even a 50 basis point hike, I would say, is factored in. Although if it goes 50, we'll probably see some kind of negative, temporary negative reaction in the market. But I think you've got to buy into that dip. Yesterday I talked about is there a way to quantify the impact of the sanctions? You know, it's something that's kind of tough to do because the, the sanctions, it's, it's kind of a, a fluid situation. Sanctions are being applied almost every day. Then there's counter sanctions now by the Russians. We don't know how much of that has already started to, um, you know, filter through the financial system, probably a small amount so far. We don't know to what degree the sanctions will be circumvented. You know, Russia and China having their own deal going on. India and Russia having their own deal going on. Then the U.S. talking to Venezuela about potentially oil and also trying to resurrect the JCPOA with Iran. So, I mean, there's all kinds of workarounds in, the prog in progress. And this is normal behavior. I mean, when something like this happens, you know, think about your own situation. If, if you're constrained in some way, uh, you try to find a way around it. You try to find a solution. You know, very few would just, you know, sit there frozen uh, and, you know, not respond. So I think in that sense, it's also very hard to quantify. But I came up with kind of a methodology that I talked about yesterday, and that was looking at bank residual. Bank residual is literally bank net worth. It's assets minus liabilities. It's bank capital, bank net worth, okay? And the reason why I did this is because banks are very important price setters in the economy. You know, there are, there are price setters in the economy, the, the government being number one in, in, by virtue of the fact that it sets interest rates through the Fed, and that sets a price also, uh, by virtue of the, what the government pays for things, uh, that sets a price and other prices kind of radiate or, or scale off of that, uh, including labor. So, um, yeah, I spoke about bank residual and the big hit that it took during the, uh, this whole period of the war and the sanctions. Actually, what was interesting is, is prior to the war, we saw a bank residual recovering from the COVID pandemic, uh, and you know everything looked pretty good, and then the war started, and then it cratered again. And I said yesterday that we saw almost 160 billion decline. Uh, bank residual is around two trillion right now, but we saw from peak to trough about 160 billion decline. And when you use the supplemental leverage ratio of a minimum uh, regulatory threshold of 3%, all right, how do, you, how do you calculate that? You have to take uh, tier one capital, bank capital, and divide it by uh, consolidated assets, and that's got to equal 0.03, 3%. All right, so that's the minimum. So if you take, um, if you divide 157 billion by 0.03, you come out to like five trillion, and that's a five, basically a five trillion hit to the banks in terms of um, asset capability. In other words, assets that the banks could have on their books that was wiped out. That that asset potential or asset capability that was taken away by the the war and the sanctions. Right? We saw an immediate impact once the war started, five trillion, basically a kind of a write down in the in banks power 
or ability to hold assets. Five trillion ability taken away. That's big. And I mentioned that in the pandemic, in the worst period of the pandemic from like April 2020 until uh, August 2020, we saw a similar drawdown in bank residual. It was a little bit bigger. It was like 175 billion, you know, so that was almost uh, 6 trillion. So, you know, 5 trillion this time, 6 trillion during the pandemic, the worst period, the worst, you know, moment of the pandemic when everything was shut down, when we had, you know, the virtually the economy entirely shut down. Um, so I think the hit, if we talk about the market as a discounting mechanism, what do I mean? The market reflects or anticipates the impact of policy or an event or changes in supply and demand. I mean, it, it, and if we look at it through that lens and the impact it has had so far on bank residual, I thought that was a, a pretty good discounting of the situation. Now, it may get much, much worse. You know, I can't, I can't say that it, it absolutely won't. But I think up until now, you know, everything's been put out there on the table. Uh, I don't know what additional sanctions, if any, are being discussed. I, there could be, you know, the, the Russian side. I mean, today they sanctioned Biden and Anthony Blinken and Hillary Clinton. But that's just, you know, that, that's just silliness. I mean, that, that's just uh, for show. I mean, well, he's got none of them, like Jen Psaki said, you know, none of us are planning a trip to Russia anytime soon. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of like ridiculous. But there could be more coming from the Russian side with the uh, ban on certain exports. Uh, you know, obviously, if it would include energy, you know, that could be a big thing. But right now, I think right now, with all the information that is out there that the market can see, and at the same time, we have seen this big hit to bank residual. You know, banks, again, very important as pricing uh, entities within the economy, right? I mean, they, they have to price assets when they make a loan. When they make a loan, the bank has to determine. I mean, look, if you go to buy a house, the bank has you bring in an appraiser or the bank brings in an appraiser to decide the value of the house. And that's how it sets the amount of the loan that it is going to give you. So, I mean, you should understand it from that standpoint. Banks are very important price setters in the economy. And we just saw this huge hit of five trillion in asset capability taken away. So I think right now, and I'll repeat what I said yesterday, I think right now, to me, that sounds like a pretty significant hit, a pretty significant discounting of the situation. And again, I don't know, maybe, you know, the, the, it'll escalate more and hopefully the war will not escalate more. I mean, that's the last thing we need is World, world War Three. I think we're already in World War Three because sanctions really are like, I mean, they destroy like like war destroys. I mean, they, they destroy supply chains. People can starve. They, they, you know, can freeze to death without, you know, heating fuel or whatever. I mean, it might take longer, but you have basically similar results. So we can almost say it's World War Three. We just hope to God and pray that it's not going to go to a nuclear war. But let's get back to the economics, all right, as I always try to do. It's hard sometimes because, you know, these are... I mean, th this is a significant event going on right now. I mean, you're, uh, you're pitting two of the world's largest nuclear superpowers against each other. So we don't even want to imagine what the extreme potentiality could be here. But just from an economic standpoint, I think the hit that the banks have taken in terms of their residual, I think it discounts, you know, right now, um, the situation we are in and that's why again I think the market is primed for a rebound you got really really negative sentiment lots of bearish sentiment you know we've seen huge put call uh, put volume 
Um, you know, so there are a lot of sentiment indicators there and market psychology, very, very negative. I think we're okay. Now, tomorrow again, we're going to see the Fed raise interest rates for the first time since December 2018. It uh, should be only a 25 basis point hike. We'll see what they say in their statement. You might get some volatility, but for the most part, I think that's pretty much baked in and um, we go up from here. And let's keep our fingers crossed that, you know, things now uh, have kind of reached um, some sort of equilibrium. I mean, the war is still going on, uh, but the war hasn't escalated to the point where NATO is involved. And we're waiting to see what the Russian counter sanctions are. I mean, if it's just simply, you know, uh, <laughs> sanctioning Hillary Clinton and Biden and, and his gang, well, that, that's really uh, just symbolic anyway. So that's it for today, folks. Um, we'll see what's going on. Enjoy. Bye.